thank you again for being here at Wisconsin Business Owners Lunch and Learn. Our presenter today is Maggie Mongan, Master Business Coach and the owner of Brilliant Breakthroughs, Inc. Maggie's an outstanding Master Business Coach. She's all about helping business owners. She helps them optimize their leadership and their business performance. She thrives serving uh, SMB people and it helps them gain a competitive advantage at a fraction of the cost corporations pay. She's not your cut cookie cutter business coach at all. Uh, she's a former CEO of a tech startup and she knows the intricacies of business and how each one is different requires customized solutions. Last year she co-authored an article on how to optimize leadership and business performance that was published in a professional journal and she presented at a global conference that was the one in Vienna. Yes. Yes. And uh, she actually is a thought leader in the business sector. When OnYourMark.com, my business, started working with Maggie on her uh, web presence about a year ago, uh, we helped her establish her social media platforms. My team gave her the Twitter handle at Brilliant Blogger, B-L-O-G-R, Brilliant Blogger. And we did that for a reason. She, the, I mean, she practices what she preaches. She's approaching 800 blog posts. Mm -hmm. And she's generating about 10,000 page views a month. Her site, uh, last time we looked at it, her most recent 90-day rolling average was at uh, 960,000. That's her rank in traffic. That's among a minimum, most conservative estimate of the number of sites being 170 million. I think that it's actually more like 450 million sites. So to be in the top 1 million is, any way you look at it, it's great. Uh, she's in the top one half of 1%, no matter how you look at it. She's ready to share her wisdom, experience, and knowledge with us. And uh, I wish we could have allotted more than 30 minutes for this. 35 with our little in-between. Today, she'll help us understand the elusive world of business blogging, really break it down in a non-geek speak, and see how it can help you. You ready to learn what your business blog needs to drive viewers to your site? Help me welcome Maggie Manga. Everybody, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to surprise you because I'm going to do something a little different. Matter of fact, a lot of things differently today. But I want to mention something before we start the presentation, and that is at the back of your handout, and it's a handout like this with a, a little brilliant breakthrough sun on it. At the back, there's some action items for you to do, and I would encourage you to take action on those three action items to help you become a brilliant business blogger. Say that fast. Three so times. just to clarify, you'd like us to take action on the action items? Yes, and that's exactly what I'm getting at. Don't think about it, just do it, okay? So we have a very different approach to that. And today, because we only have 30 minutes together, I'm going to talk about the foundation so you know what you ought to be doing, but we're not going to get into the how-tos because that's going to take too much time. However, because this group and others have come forward and said, I want to know how to do it, I have decided to present that at a workshop that's on December 1st, and action item number three talks about that, and there's a link that you can go check out. Um, David is going to be presenting on how to do some really smart videos to attract business clients. And Alan Edge is also going to be at that workshop, and he's going to help us create our elevator speeches. And this is all hands-on. Like for the blog part, you're actually going to create a blog while you're there, get templates, all sorts of stuff. And you have me to work with. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to spend time on that later. It's there, you know, and I encourage you to go further if you want to learn the how-tos of what I'm speaking of. So I would love to invite everybody to come on up right now. Come on up right here, and we're going to do a group photo. Come on. Come on. 
Get your butts off the seat. Come on. Here's our background, folks. You know, I'm to be here. Okay, we are here. I'm supposed to get the right from Okay, you should be in front of the black background. If you're not in front of the black background, you are not in the picture. We've got to get in the black background. We're squishing. We're squishing. Turn it back for you. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Go that way. More. Okay, everybody vlog this. Don't we, we rock. We rock? Yes. There we go. There you go. Does this oh, photo like make my butt look Remember, remember side, 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 Smile. Yeah, he's doing the flash. I'm 63. Okay. It's a joke. There's no flash. It's video. Good job. I can. I can. I can. Okay, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Claudia, look at me. Busted. Okay, now this time let's do it smiling. Ready? Yeah. We weren't before. Awesome. Got it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. That's what y'all came for. Watch the car in the room. <laughs> All right, we're done. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you. The picture will be posted on the meetup page. You'll be able to see it, and I believe you'll be able to download it. If not, for sure, you'll be able to see it downloaded from the Facebook Oh, sure. Page. And just right-click on it, save image as, and then block. Okay, now I'm going to tell you what to do. Forget what they said. I'm going to tell you what to do with it to put it on your business blog. <laughs> but do what they said too, okay? I'm doing something different. And I'll share what I'm doing as I present and we get to that point, okay? All right, everybody refocused? <sighs> okay. I am Maggie Mondan. I am the owner of Brilliant Breakthroughs, which everybody says, that's a lot of bees if you put business blogging with that. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I would like to say welcome, and I'm really glad that you came today, and you're sitting here, and you're, you're interested in learning how to gain visibility for your business, and boost it so you can attract the right people and serve them all, because that's what business is all about. We all have this wonderful message that we're trying to get out there and to help people, right? Well, the, one of the easiest and best ways to do it is through business blogging. <clears throat> so, let's start with why blog for business. And we're going to go ahead and start with your handout so you can write, take, write and take notes along the way, okay? So, I could say, gee, why don't you think about why you should blog for business, but I bet you have a clue since you're already here. Blogging for business is all about exchanging ideas, okay? It's an idea exchange. And when you blog for business, you're actually showcasing your business and your expertise. Oh, I gave you the next clue. You're highlighting yourself as an expert. Makes sense? I think it makes a lot of sense. And the reason why you get to become an expert is because you are adding value to your customers and your potential customers and what it is they're seeking because people go to the internet and they either seek out services for one or two reasons typically it's either for information or it's simply for entertainment some of us may be in the entertainment business so we get to double dip but most of us aren't at least in this room. And that becomes an important thing because if you're thinking about people are out there seeking the wisdom you have, if you're the one out there that's writing about it and is showing up on the internet, oh my gosh, immediately 
you become an expert because you're talking about what they want to hear about. And I'd like to start because oftentimes people say, well, what, what really is a blog? And it's important to know that a blog really is short form content. It matters because you're sharing information. It's all about what your message is and who you choose to share it with. Now, I want you to think back a good while ago before, <laughs> before Al Gore invented the internet, okay? <laughs> and I want you to think about when you used to send messages. We would use paper and pen, and we would go ahead and put it in an envelope, take it to the post office. We would put our stamp on it and then we would have the post office put their official stamp on it saying, hey, your message came from said town on this date. Well, guess what your blog post is? Your blog is the short message you're writing, but posting it is you virtually posting it, publishing it, sending it out into the internet so it can live virtually. Same thing, except we're doing it virtually. I hope that makes sense. So sometimes there's one other word that you hear in this conversation, and it's blog posts as one word. Okay, Blog post essentially means that it's a blog that you've posted. It's already published out there. Okay, so now that we have the definitions, I think we can move into something that you will really appreciate quite a bit. Oh my gosh, business always seems to come in threes. Always in threes. And this is where you're going to take a moment and think about your own business, okay? And when you think about your own business, I want you to think about how so many people come to you and they ask you questions that are common. Think of three questions that are frequently asked when you say what you do. And go ahead and write them down under your FAQs frequently asked questions, because we're going to do something with this. And some of you might have just spent a little time thinking about that earlier today. So take a moment. All right. Now, People are seeking answers to those three topics that you've just written down. They are looking for somebody that can provide a solution to help them solve those issues. I'm going to share with you how to take that a step further and how to become a brilliant blogger. FAQs, we pretty much understand what an FAQ is, right? But what is an SAQ? It's the should ask questions. These are the questions that they should be asking you. And they're not. And the problem and the reason tends to be because they don't even know where to begin and what they should be asking. But I know you know because you're an expert. So think about that for a moment. People come to you and they say, oh, I need help with, and I always hear, as a, as a master business coach, I always hear, I need more time, I need more clients, and I need more money. And I say, great, good, we all do, and that's the truth, okay? But that's not really what they need. They think they need that, and they're right, they do. But I know what they need to do so they can get those three things. So your should ask questions, take a moment to write them down, are what you know they need help with, and that will help them solve their issues. So write down three should ask questions. You'd really like them to ask this about you and what you do. should ask questions, that highlights you as an expert, 
it highlights the wisdom you have, and it starts to differentiate you from what other people call competitors. However, I believe you have no direct competitors because everybody does something different and they serve somebody differently than the next person, even if they're in the same business. Mm hmm I just heard. <laughs> okay, so when you're blogging for content and you're writing all this short form content, we're gonna talk about that a little more, I want you to think about this for a moment. You, as the author of your blog, as the primary marketer of your blog, you and your business, you need to write about two things. You need to write about what the FAQs are, because those are the keywords they're searching for to find you out on the web. And you need to write about your SAQs. And if you think hard, you'll have tons of SAQs to write about, okay? And the reason why is you're starting to educate them on what else they should be thinking about. And you're not giving them the same information that they're getting everywhere else. You're starting to showcase your expertise. Right back to the very beginning. Why blog for business? Okay? Now, we've talked about FAQs, we've talked about SAQs, but there's one more thing, population. This actually becomes a statistic that has a three in it. It doesn't matter what sales experts you're listening to on the planet, they always come back and say, only 3% of your marketplace is ready to purchase at any given moment. Only 3% of the marketplace at any given moment. So why is that important for business blogging? Because when they're ready to purchase, and you never know when that'll be, you need to be right there in front of them. And that's why frequency matters. And we'll get to that in a moment. Okay. So I, I just want you to think about that. Only 3% are looking to purchase right now. And tomorrow, 3.5%. Marketing blogging, marketing blogging, <laughs> marketing is critical to your business. And blogging is your primary, or it should be, your primary tool for marketing for your business because you can control it completely. You can court your potential customers and your customers along the way, adding value to how you serve them. Additionally, oh my gosh, it's free. <laughs> it's pretty simple, it's free, guys. So we wanna go ahead and focus on the fact that we get to control everything, okay? It helps you build your credibility because you're telling them what they need, but you're also helping them think about other things when you start incorporating your SAQs into your blogging content. You're connecting with more people because let's face it, you can't always be shaking everybody's hand anymore. Time is, time is a true factor and why not include high touch, meeting and greeting people and shaking hands, as well as high tech to your marketing mix. Okay, this gets really interesting. So you, you build credibility because you're showing up being an expert, you're connecting with people, letting them know that you're playing a game because you don't have a stale website, because you're actually blogging, and you're developing customers, but you're developing your ideal customer because they're interested in not just what everybody wants to know, but your flavor of what you're telling them is important for them to be focusing on. And then the last thing is, if you do it well, you're going to be rewarded. That's going to put cash in your bank account. Does that make sense so far? Okay, good. So remember, only 3% well, the population is ready at any given time to say, yes sir, yes sir, three bags full, sign me up. But meanwhile, with your blogging efforts, you have the opportunity to court them. You're dating them. You're letting them know, hey, I'm here, I'm awesome, I'm serving you, I want to help you. And that's the power of blogging. So when they're ready, they become that 3%, and they move from 6 to 3%, you go, all right, and you're there, ready to capture it. Huh. Wow, 
look at that. <laughs> Hey, geez, I don't know what I should say. Keith gave me such a great introduction there. But I will share with you, I am a, Maggie Mong, and I'm the owner of Brilliant Breakthroughs, Inc. And I am a master business coach. I coach other coaches. I coach experts in their field. And I do it because I care about how people show up and their message and how they serve their particular customers. And what I found over time is because I'm not a big consulting firm, I can do it at a fraction of the cost. So I work with small to medium businesses, anything from solo to 150 people typically. And when I work with a client, I'm all about driving impact. Uh, Keith shared earlier, I'm about optimizing your leadership and your business performance. And I do that through the fact that I am pretty good at process improvement. I spent quite a few of my years in that, as well as sales and marketing. And I smash those two together. And I help people figure out what it is they're doing, what their message is, their business's purpose, its vision, its mission, and build that foundation so everything that you're doing becomes consistent. And everybody knows what you're doing in the marketplace. It's really, really clear. and I really like doing and having fun. That's all I'm going to say for now. But I want to share with you, I would encourage you to go to my website, brilliantbreakthroughs.com, which you'll see on the back page, I have that for you. Be, and sign up for my blog, because you'll see firsthand what we're talking about. And you can start copying some of those points that you're seeing over and over and over. And since you're a business owner, it's going to help you build your business. Uh, frequently asked questions. I should probably share a few, shouldn't I? And I'll even throw in a couple essay cues. Everybody, the number one question when it comes to blogging is, how often do I have to blog? What's the frequency? Jeff Bullis says, blog once a week. Everyone else will say, get up to three times a week. And the reason why you would like to get up to three times a week is because 3% of the population is ready to buy right now. And you don't know which 3% is looking at your website. The other thing is SEO, particularly Google, and their algorithms support and reward somebody who's blogging three times a week. That is the magic number. And I'm going to tell you, it takes a little while to get up to three times a week. I didn't do it right away. I worked on one, and I became consistent, and that's the key. Flex your muscle, your blogging muscle, just like going to the gym. You need to flex your blogging muscle, okay? Start with one, get consistent with it, start making a list of all different things you wanna talk about. By the way, your website's loaded with all sorts of topics that are FAQs and SAQs. And then move up to two a week. And then once you hit two a week, get three a week. It's not that hard once you develop that consistent rhythm. The next question that comes along with frequency is, well, how long do they have to be? Because some blogs, as we know, is, um, my gosh, they're really, really long. And that matters. Because the word count has to be at least 300 to go ahead and get um, your position in the marketplace where you're being acknowledged and it is considered a block. 300, but when you include your signature, it's good for about 50 words, okay? Maybe even 60, depending upon what you say. And your call to action, oh, that's another 10 words. So we start to whittle it down very quickly and I'll share with you what the topics are and how to do that. 300 to 750 words. No more than that, no more than that. If you pass that, Go ahead and split your blog up and make it a series. Part one, part two, even part three if you need to. I have one where I help people discover how to work with their ideal customer and define it, and it's six blogs. So I have six parts to that, but you have a good start once you review all six of those. Now, comments are a big thing, and, and social engagement is a big thing. It's about showing love and appreciation. And we always say, well, if you like something, you should let people know you like it, okay? 
when, when we think about the fact that our website is our online presence and it's the castle to our kingdom and we want to make sure that our empire is very happy, we want comments. We want to know what people are thinking. We want to know how we can serve them better. And it's nice hearing, hey, you're doing a great job sharing what you're sharing. I like what you're sharing with us. And if you think back to the old days and royalty, often would the king and queen show up on the balcony and wave to everybody. And they would do it every once in a while, make sure everybody's showing love. So again, log one to three times a week. Let them tell you what's going on in their world. It creates topics for other blogs, by the way. And you want to make sure that you're engaging your social media. That's an important element, too. Social media, you can connect to your website via Next Scripts Snap, social network automated poster. It's a plug-in through WordPress. And it does a lot of the work for you once you set it up. As a matter of fact, it's automatic. So you don't have to do anything after that. And that will broadcast your blog all to all your social media sites, or at least the primary ones. About 20 to be exact. Um, the other thing is you want to show love. You want to show lots of love. You want to get love. You just spent an hour and a half creating a great blog. Isn't it great if somebody goes, how many times do you read a blog? And it's good, but you don't make a comment like, hey, thanks. Or a great article. Appreciate it. I see Ron sitting over here, and I don't give him enough love on, online. <laughs> Ron creates some great articles. I don't give him enough love. But when he did, I, I, when he created one, and I gave him some love, something really cool happened from somebody else from out of state and created some business for someone I know. So business does happen, through comments even. Okay, the other thing that I want to mention to you is you have to remember that you want to grow your readership. And the way to do that is through social sites, okay? And on your blog and on your website, you ought to have a sharing capability. And mine, if, if you go to my website, which I think you will because we have actions of action items, and there's three, by the way, you can see on the right side of my site, I have social media links where you can share and like and favor because that all matters. How often are you out searching for a product or a service and you're looking and you start looking at what people are saying? What are the comments? What are the customer reviews? You do it, right? Well, if you do it, guess what? Other people are doing it too. And comments is a great way to show the love and appreciation for somebody who's taken the time to serve you well. So I want you to remember this. Your site is your kingdom. It's totally your kingdom to how you are perceived out in your marketplace. And you get to create your marketplace through your blog. Okay? All right. Now, some people ask me about ghost blogging. Here's an SAQ. Okay? Ghost blogging. And I have a friend who does it, and her blogs are terrible because they don't address anything, not a single thing, that they need, um, that their customers are looking for. And it's, it's neutral, it's nebulous. And anybody looking at it says, oh yeah, that's cute, but it really didn't serve me. Okay, your customers are looking to be served, to have value added. A ghostwriter doesn't have the wisdom that you have. They don't have your passion, they don't have your purpose, they don't have your vision, and they don't know what you know about your customer. They might know an FAQ or two, but they don't know how to communicate, and they surely don't know what the SAQs are, even though they might be able to write well. So if you're somebody who's saying, oh, I write really terribly, I would tell you, get your topics, rough it out, and then if you need a ghostwriter, get a ghostwriter. But I would encourage you not to, because you can write however you want, unless there's terrible grammatical errors. And you'll, your customers will still appreciate you because it's your voice, it's your flavor. Okay? Can, can, you, hold, can you hold off on that one? Write it down. I'll have a spot for it. Okay, so no to ghost writing, unless it's absolutely necessary. And if it is, hey, call me, I'll write for you. It's pretty simple that way, but you don't need a ghostwriter. 
because your customers will love you for who you are. I want to do something really simple, quick, and easy for you, and I'd love to go into this, but our time isn't going to allow it. Michael Hyatt is an expert in blogging. He's considered one of the nation's leading experts, and he says that there's seven essential things that you need to remember when you're blogging. I wrote them down on your handout, and I'll just go through them very quickly. I'm going to tell you there's 10, and if you look at my website and you pay attention to the patterns of how I write, you might be able to identify the other three. But Michael Hyatt comes back and he says, okay, the first thing we need to do is have you focus on the reader. So for people who get stuck saying, oh, I don't know how to blog, or I don't know what to write about, or oh, there's so many other people out there in the industry, stop that, just stop it. Because if you're making it about you and your blog isn't about you, it's about your marketplace and serving your marketplace. So move beyond yourself and focus, just absolutely focus on your customer, your reader, your potential customers, and you'll track them, okay? The other thing he says is find your voice. Another question somebody always says to me is, well, should I speak in the Queen's language? <laughs> <laughs> sure, if you're blogging to the royal family. <laughs> Seems pretty practical, doesn't it? When you hear it like that, blog, the way you want to be perceived in the marketplace. Blog who you really are. Speak the way you are. I'm lighthearted. I make my blog lighthearted. Sometimes I get a little too crazy and I have to edit stuff out, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> my customers like my crazy. <laughs> so find your voice. Think about what your customers are going to appreciate. Be authentically who you are match that together, and after you practice writing about 50, 60, 70 blogs, it will naturally appear, okay? It does, and I don't know why it takes that long, but it actually does appear. Michael also talks about how you need to create an irresistible headline. Remember we talked about what people are looking for? That's what they're putting in search engines, and you want to show up, so make your headlines have keywords in it that your customers are very interested in, or solving something that they want resolved. Uh, I'm just going to move on to the next one, and this is a hot, 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 hot one, and we actually just participated in that. Create relevant and awesome images, okay? We took a group photo. Think that's going to show up on my blog? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <Yeah. laughs> I think it will. Um, as we heard somebody say, go ahead, get it out on all your social media. I say, sure, but I'm going to tell you, put it on your blog first that you were there. Because then people know you're actually developing yourself as a professional. That you care about them and you care about how you show up. Let them know you're doing professional development. It's okay. But get awesome images out there. Images are the hottest thing on the planet right now. It's the 2015 trend. Videos are equally as hot, and it's not changing for the next couple of years because people aren't catching on to that just yet. But have you noticed that when you look at something online, if there's an image, you'll stop and look at it? Mm -hmm. It's true. So you should probably take some time and find a really cool image to put up on your blog post, each one, and if you go look at mine, you'll know where to put it, okay? <laughs> the other thing that Michael says is make scannable copy, and this is something that is pretty neat, and I see that I, I have to jump back and do one, but I'll talk about scannable copy. Once I've written my blog and I go back and I edit it, I look at words that I should emphasize by, by bolding it, do I break up the paragraph so it's easier to read, do I make lists, how do I go ahead and um, make it easier because people don't take the time to read a lot anymore they just scan so if you can help their eyes go to here and here and here to pick up the critical part of the message that helps you considerably and it serves them well and you look like you know what you're talking about instead of you know 500 words of blah 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 blah, blah, blah. okay um, when we talk about the other point that I skipped over and I want to come back to, which is personal stories. I've struggled with this personally. I don't like talking a lot about my 
life or my experience because it's very private to me. However, I've worked on this a lot. And I do share things about me now that show up on my site. And I make it relevant to my readers. I don't talk about everything. Stuff that might be applicable to them and they can learn something from. I also got smart after one. I said, well, I should probably talk about things that my clients have happening. Ha! Huh. Because that's relevant, right? Okay, so that's another way to bring in something that's practical and they can say, oh, I have that happen too. And I never thought about it. And then the last point he says is make it really, really, really easy to share. Have likes, have your share button so people can pass it on to a friend, can share the love, let people know that you're out there producing some great content that's adding value and you are worth listening to. Okay, now, as I told you, there's three more, but I'm not sharing them because we're just dealing with mics today, or I should say Michaels. He is a Michael. Um, but I am going to share with you one thing, and that's this wonderful image. Okay, now I have to step around here <laughs> so everybody can see that. My number one tip for your blog is when you create content, Create it originally on your website first. We all know that that image right there is a copyright. And the reason why you create your original content on your website is because your website is copyrighted. Remember we talked about the virtual stamp a long time ago? That means it's yours. It's like the post office. So you want to make sure that all your content is first on your site instead of Facebook or LinkedIn. Because if you read the fine, fine print, you will learn that anything that you put on there, they own. And I couldn't believe it, but it's true. So start with your own site. It's your material. It's your intellectual property. Start there. The, the photo that we just took, the group photo, it might be out on social before I write about it tomorrow morning, but it's going to show up on my site first before I spread it out everywhere else. Even though other people may be spreading it, I'm doing it on my site first, okay? So you want to go ahead and make sure that all of your content that's yours is copyrighted at your domain name. That means you own it then. You're not giving up the rights to it. And another thing that's really cool that people don't think about with blogging content and copyright is when you're creating new products or services or you have an event that you're doing, you should blog about it and put a link in there to wherever you're going to be posting it because then it, it's first starting on your site. It's the root, it's the cornerstone of you mastering your marketplace. Is that making sense? Number one tip. So we get really simple. And I say, okay, fine. Let's talk about this for a moment. What's your number one online strategy for marketing? It should be blogging. <laughs> it's free, it's yours, you can totally control it. Do whatever you want with it. Make it any flavor you choose to. And I'm going to wrap up. I'm not going to go through a whole review of everything. I'm just going to simply share a few points. Action items. Start blogging now. Right now. Don't wait. Well, okay, wait till you get out of here because right now we're doing high touch. <laughs> but blog about what you're experiencing. It matters. And start out rough. You don't get great right away. Very few people, even great writers, it takes them a while to figure out how to blog for business because it's different. You're not just chatting about whatever you want. Okay, so you want to start blogging now because you want to start serving your people. And you want to start differentiating yourself so you can attract customers right away. And if you're consistent, guess what? Your pipeline, your revenue becomes <laughs> consistent as well. And, and the other thing that I guess is really important that I want to mention is that blogging is your ultimate magnet. We heard earlier that 
Um, I'm ranked in the top one million of all websites. We heard that I have over 10,000 visitor page reviews on my site on the month, on a month. And I'm going to tell you, it's, okay, it may be really awesome, according to my clients, but it's really because I've used my blog as a magnet out on social media to pull everyone to my blog and to my website. I've blogged for five years professionally now. I didn't even have 100 people coming to my site on any given month until I chose, and I was doing everything the way I am now with the exception of I added Snap as a plugin, and that took all of my information out to social media, which then brought them back to my site to check me out. That was the one difference I made. And because of that, it became my magnet, and I was able to attract more people. And guess what? I'm serving more people. Think about it. If you have 1,000 people looking at your site that haven't been looking at it before, or 10,000, or 100,000, and 3% of them are ready to purchase at any given time, Oh my gosh, immediately, you've just gained how many more customers? From something that you should be doing anyway. It gets really simple, okay? So I'm gonna share with you, start blogging now. <laughs> just don't wait anymore. And, and know that it, it's, it can be easy, but it gets easy once you start practicing. Not while you're thinking about it. Just start doing it. And because of that, I shared with you another action item, and that is go to my blog, brilliantbreakthroughs.com, and go ahead and look under the menu up at the top and hover over the About section. When you hover over the About section, you're going to see something that says, Free ebook, 13 tips on how to immediately boost your blog. And it's not all what you see here. Matter of fact, it's way cooler. <laughs> way cooler. Boy, that's great English. Okay? But anyway, I, I'm sharing that with you because it's more content and it keeps you in the game and it's going to give you more guidance. And it's like an ebook you've never seen before. It will only take you 10 minutes <laughs> to read because you're going to want to look at all the images again. Not necessarily the content, but the images. And then see how I've worked the content with the images. So it will help you out a lot. And then the third action item is consider the workshop that I shared with you earlier, because then we'll be doing the how-tos, okay? So those are the action items, it's pretty simple. If you're going to blog, do it well. There's a quote here at the bottom of the handout and it says, whatever is worth doing at all, do it well, okay? Do it well. So take the time. You don't have to become a master at blogging. That will happen over a year or two. You'll figure it out. But you have to start somewhere. So it's time to get social. Serve your customers. Doesn't matter if you're in a startup, if you're cleaning up your business, or even you're ready to step up your business. Blogging is primary to your market. I'd like to ask you if you have any questions. Anybody, any questions? Would you like a microphone? No. Okay, I'll, I'll repeat it, okay. <laughs> Question? I'm just kidding. Um, okay, when you said to use your blog as a copyright, I mean, is it just because it's on your blog or do you have to write something on it that copyrights it? I don't know right. if I missed something there. Your website already is copyrighted. Okay, okay. So, so anything you create on, on it is copyrighted. Is going to be copyrighted. Okay. Um, can I? Is there anything else? Yeah, that should, there should be a copyright statement. There should be. A, okay. There it's should. In the footer of yours. Okay. All right. And so take, take a look when you look at brilliantbreakthroughs.com. There's a copyright. I don't think there's one on because. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Um, let me clarify this. The question was, how do you get your blog, your blogging copyrighted? And it's very simple. Your website should have a copyright on it. Um, in the footer, the whole site should be. So each blog, therefore, would have its copyright. Um, do you have a question? 
No, just to add that a copyright, if it's your material, you don't have to have a statement on it. It's right. automatically copywritten. You own the copyright. By your, by your action. Right. right. Yes. Because you are the author. Right. So as an author of a blog, you're, right. and it's landing on your website, which think of it like a book, if we're thinking of an author, it's already copyrighted. What stops me from copying someone else's and putting it on my website? Yeah. That was my question. That, that doesn't make sense. I can put it on my website and say it's mine because it's on my website. Shouldn't there be some kind of data? The key, okay, the question was. Yeah. We have a layer here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me see if I can say this properly. The question was I see something out on the internet, it's pretty awesome, and I just go ahead and pop it on my, web, uh, my website and call it my blog. Well, that's plagiarism. <laughs> okay? And guess what? If somebody finds out you did that, they can take you to court. They can fine you. Um, I know somebody that before they started working with me received some cease and desist orders. And uh, another individual that I never ended up working with, but he did tell me that he was fined $25,000. <gasps> and his, his site came down, and Google would not allow him to put anything else up under that same domain name <gasps> because he was plagiarizing. How can I prove, let's say I put a blog on my website and someone else takes it a year later, how do I prove that it was on my website first? Well, okay, so the question becomes proof. Original content is what I shared. Okay, we need to be talking about original content. And your, the question starts getting a little more complicated and I don't know if we have enough time to go into that right now. Stick with original content. Oh, we have a lawyer that's raising her hand, so this is going to be great. But let me just share with you, I'm going to oversimplify this. Stick with original content, okay? You can say, gee, so-and-so has a really great article, you might want to check it out, and you could even put the link in there, but you as an expert, think about this, the cloud that you have as an expert. I read, I know what's going on in my industry. And if I say, check out so-and-so's post, and I tell people what to look for, I'm sharing their content, and I'm looking good that I'm hanging out with other experts. But I'm telling my customers how I want them to look at it. That's a good way to share other people's content without plagiarizing. I, I agree with you, but if someone takes my blog, or I take someone's blog, you're asking about what to do if there's a situation I'm that needs follow-up. That's okay. a different conversation. Right. The, okay, but, okay. But I, I, don't, I don't think that's the focus of the presentation. So, so my answer is simplicity and integrity. But let's hold on a second because we happen to have a lawyer in the audience. And I think she would like to share something with us. I am not giving any legal advice. She is not going to give any legal advice. <laughs> But can you share what we might want to know about? Uh, I, would, I would say that if you are concerned about this topic, talking to a lawyer for an hour, who, especially a lawyer who specializes in copyright, and there, are many, and there are many lawyers who do, will be way cheaper than dealing with cease and desist orders, or <laughs> whether you are on the receiving end or the, or the having to give an out end in the future. So it, Really, you can try to plan ahead a bit, especially if you're talking to some, talking to somebody who really understands copyright law. It's probably the best way to deal with it if that if this is any concern. Okay, thank you. And I'm not going to mention your name. <laughs> the lawyer in the room said, "Keep it really simple and be wise." Spend an hour, if you're really concerned about copyright, spend an hour talking to a lawyer who specializes in copyright and let them help you out, okay? It's that simple. Okay, I think there's one more question because this is probably going to be the last black hole. Okay, okay, I got two more coming. All right. Question? So, microphone. Microphone, please. Thank you. So, 
you're looking at a neophyte. You're looking at somebody who knows nothing <laughs> about blogging. Okay. And I've always been scared of blogging because I'm one of those people, I'm very, very private. And I know you have to get over that if you're going to advertise your business. But I'm always nervous about who's going to see what. So I've heard a lot here today. I heard a lot today that will help me begin to put my arms around what I need to do to learn to blog as a marketing tool. The question I have for you from a perspective that I don't understand, but if you're on LinkedIn and somebody sees something that's really profound, they share it. And you will see Maggie Mongan shared this. And then you see the quote from somebody else. So people know right away that's not your words, you're not plagiarizing, but you've gone on notice that you saw something very profound, very meaningful, and you want to share it with a broader audience. Correct. That's very different from what we're talking about right now, right? Indeed. Okay. Indeed. What we're talking about for blogging, what I'm emphasizing is your original content, your FAQs, your SAQs, what you're doing in the marketplace, why you're doing it, so your customers are getting value. Things like quotes or images or little ticklers or quick tips, that's just to continue courting your potential customers. Think about that for a moment. You're courting your potential customers. I'm there, I'm there, I'm out in your marketplace. Check me out, check me out, check me out. That's all you're doing with those types of activities. Okay, I think there's one more question. Two, I got two, one over here after you're complete. Okay. I really like your concept of the FAQs versus the SAQs. Thank you. That was a very, very interesting approach. I'm curious, do you have a, a simple example of an SAQ? It's something I've, I've been trying to work on on the worksheet here, but I'm, I'm struggling. I, I would appreciate some simple model that this is what an SAQ might look I will share with you mine. I know mine better than okay. anything. Thank you. Okay? My FAQs are, my, uh, people always say I need more time, I need more money, I need more customers so I can get more money. That's what they want, right. but I know what they really need, okay? They need that, we all do. And I'm just like any other business coach if I'm talking about that, right? But I'm going to say, gee, if we take time and we start looking at your purpose, your vision, the mission of your business, and we use that as a foundation for everything that you're going to create for marketing, for products, for services, for where you show up, who you're going to be connecting with, how you even use proper language for your customers, then I'm speaking SAQs. Does that help you? Is that a good example? Yes. Okay, great. All right, and we have one last question here. So I'm keenly aware of the fact that in our lives these days there tends to be a sense of overwhelm and there's, there's so much information. And actually, that's one of the things I try to help people think about, is how to actually peer down and maybe feel like they don't need to consume quite so much information. What can they let go of and simplify? And so um, I really struggle with this idea of you know, I need to produce one to three posts per week, rather than say one per month that's really outstanding that if my client's only going to see one, they can see that. But I also understand the practicality of what you're saying about, like, well, it affects the SEO, it affects the likelihood that they're going to see it when they need it. So I'm, I'm just curious to get your perspective on, on how to find that balance, and especially if perhaps my ideal client is someone who will, quite frankly, unsubscribe if I do one of three posts per week. How would you approach that? I will tell you how I approach it because one of the things I do is I help my clients simplify their strategies and action items to bring about their success and profitability because it's all about doing profitability with peace of mind, okay? And I struggled with that at first and that's why I started doing one and I worked my way up to two and three, but I talk about different things. Midweek, I'll talk about movies that I saw and how they relate and things that my clients can think of if they look at a movie. Monday I do my wisdom, Friday I do something inspirational. So I mix it up so they don't feel like they're getting all the same stuff all the time. And some are a little longer, some are shorter. It's just letting them know, I love you, I'm thinking of you, I'm here to serve you. And you can do it in a simplified manner. It takes time. But I, I do hear you because 
I believe you are a business consultant as well. And for all practical purposes, that's what I am. And you have to find that mix. And it depends upon who your clients are as well. They might need more, they might need less, but I'm going to tell you, you're rewarded. And there is one statistic that I haven't mentioned. SEO blogger says, if you blog 15 times a month, you're going to get five more times the traffic. I haven't hit 15 times a month, and I won't do it because of my customers. I don't have time for that. But that is a fact. So I'd like to wrap up right now. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm here, and you know how to get a hold of me online, OK? Um, furthermore, I am Maggie Mongan of Brilliant Breakthroughs, and I invite you to become brilliant business bloggers as well. Thank you. <laughs>